the Radio Whammo Breakfast. Let's um, talk about the night sky with Dylan Story. Uh, Dylan Story on uh, Twitter. Good morning to you, Dylan. Good morning. Good morning, Wemo. Let's talk about the big fireball in the sky. Um, everyone was talking about it. Well, not everyone. Um, only people who saw it were talking about it um, earlier on in the week. I think it was Tuesday evening, wasn't it? Yeah, Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, I didn't see it, unfortunately. A bit gutted about that, but never yeah. mind. I, I was well, well awake, but inside stooped over a computer. Well, apparently the pros yeah. the pros weren't looking at the sky because um, there was some high clouds, so no no one was actually manning the telescopes. Yeah, they all stayed home that night, which is a shame. Mm. So no one, no one was out looking good. But um, sort of what, what professional astronomers do is kind of... You don't often find professional astronomers outside looking at the sky and looking through telescopes. They're usually hauled up in some little basement room with a whole lot of old computer equipment, um, maneuvering a remote control, maneuvering a telescope somewhere else. Yeah. So um, they wouldn't be the most likely people to see it either, even if they were out. But um, they've basically put together a piece well, put a piece together what it would have been from eyewitness reports, which are notoriously unreliable, but um, if you get enough people telling what they saw, you can kind of get a picture of what this thing is. So the conclusion that um, Stardome's research astronomer Grant Christie has come up with mm. is that it was an object up to a metre wide yeah, and between 30 and 80 kilometres up entering the Earth's atmosphere Traveling very, very fast, about um, 20,000 kilometers per second, uh, um, making it the f- probably the fastest object that most people will ever see. Right, yeah. If, it, if anyone, if it, for people who did see it. So they kind of, they can kind of get an idea of how high it is by sort of triangulating the angle that different people in different locations see it at. So if you get someone in, um, in New Plymouth says they saw it in the northeast and someone in Auckland says they saw it in the southwest then you can kind of get an idea of, of where it is and how high it was so they've pieced that together from all sorts of different information plus the the brightness as described hmm. it seems to have been a, a pretty bright one brighter than most that most people have ever seen and it was, it was reported a sonic boom so as it as it's entered it's it's broken the sound barrier in the atmosphere and, and cause that sonic boom. Would that have um, would that have upset my cat? Probably if it, if the cat was outside and um yeah because he started going Probably nuts. I don't I don't know what Did time it? it was. Woke me up, you know, and uh, he oh, really? just, just started going crazy around the house. So I, I, I the next morning I found out about the meteor and figured it might have been might have been that. Oh right. Hmm. Oh my dog didn't do anything, but um. She doesn't even worry about fireworks. Yeah. Well, that's interesting, though. Um, so, yes, and, and it was reported to have fragmented at the end of its passage, so broken into pieces. Yeah. And what it probably was... So it's not it's not part of a meteor shower, right? Meteor showers are um, fragments of tiny debris that are left over from comets tails, hmm. from comets that have gone that have crossed over Earth's orbit in the past. Yeah. And the, the sort of particles you're seeing, which is which is the normal shooting stars you see, they're just sort of grain of sand-sized particles falling into the Earth's atmosphere. So where so this did this come from? Where did it come from, Dylan? Well, this would have been a um, an ancient rock which would have been floating around the solar system for billions of years. It wouldn't have landed. It would have burnt up and, and been destroyed before it hit the ground. Right. Oh. So sometimes, sometimes fragments of these go on to hit the ground. Yeah. If, if certainly if they're big enough, they can last long enough in the Earth's atmosphere to hit the ground. But, Wouldn't um, it have just like come down to Earth as stardust? Yes, I guess it would. It would have been instantly vaporized by the heat of friction of the atmosphere. So it would have. Yeah, maybe we're, they'll be. We're probably breathing some of it in. I probably breathed some of it in on the way to work on Wednesday morning. Stardust probably, in my lungs. Um, Stardust, yeah, or, or solar system dust at least. Mm. Who knows? Maybe there could have been alien um, microbes on it, which yep. are now assimilating into your body, Wemo. Yeah, exactly. It's, it'd be just like the alien can... with obscene bursting out thingy. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can't rule these things out, can you? 
No, you can't until it's disproven. Okay, well, that was exciting. <laughs> um, so that was something that we could all have seen if we were outside at that time of night. Um, what, are, what are NASA doing this week? Um, they've got two sort of two announcements. They've unveiled the first, the preliminary design for their next spacecraft, space vehicle to replace the shuttle, mm-hmm. which is the Orion capsule. And the photos of it just kind of look like a space capsule, but they assure us that it's um it's highly technologically advanced and it's unlike the space shuttle which can only take people into low Earth orbit to service things like the Hubble Space Telescope and mm. the and the ISS. This one is designed to be able to go further to the moon and perhaps the Lagrange points, perhaps even further. So it's a much more robust vehicle, much more technologically advanced than the space shuttles. Cool. So that's kind of exciting. Things are things are moving on there. Also, um, a few weeks ago, I talked about the space capsule. Uh, I mean the um, the space probe entering orbit around Mercury, which is very exciting. First time this has happened. So it's it's sent back some pictures of the surface of Mercury, parts of the surface of Mercury that have never been photographed before. Oh, I saw a picture of that. Um, it kind of looks like the moon. It kind of looks like the moon. Yeah, and to the to the untrained eye, and um, I would include my eye in in those unchained eyes it just looks like a sort of a gray cratered thing doesn't it but um so we've seen the photos but we what we haven't seen yet is the expert analysis yeah so okay i'm sure that um when the scientists look at those they'll be able to tell all sorts of different things from those photos and they'll tell us lots of exciting things about the surface of mercury and the the nature of uh planetary formation and therefore explanation be behind the whole of our existence, I'm sure. If, if people haven't seen the photo, basically it looks like an adolescent's face. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, I guess, it, I guess it does. And what's happening at the Auckland Stardome Observatory this week, Dylan Story? Um, telescopes. I was there last night and we kind of had it, it kind of clouded over a little bit for telescopes. I was also there Wednesday night and it was a perfect night for telescopes. Saturn's rings are the are the star of the night sky these days. People love it looking through looking through the telescope and seeing the rings and seeing that it's actually there and it's not it's not just a hoax. Yep. Uh there is a show on at seven o'clock called Stars of the Pharaohs mm-hmm. which is all about um the the way the Egyptians saw the sky. And the fact that they were aliens. No, it doesn't really it doesn't really go into Stargate those. Uh, Does it go to Stargate SG SG one? Says Christine. Skips completely over Stargate. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, just looks at things like uh, the way the pharaohs inter- uh, interpreted star patterns as being sort of uh, symbolic of certain gods, mm. and therefore justifying their um, dictatorial reign mm. on all the people. Cool, that sounds exciting. At this Auckland Stardom Observatory, Dylan's story on Twitter as we can continue your stargazing conversations. Uh, thanks very much. Indeed. We'll, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks very much. It is seven minutes away from eight. Ready, Wemmer.